Welcome to Bar Chart series of webinars designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally, uh, to give you some traders' insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject finding the best dividend stocks in a down market. Now, in uh, recent years, investors have kind of turned away from dividend stocks for high growth, high multiple stocks. And many have looked upon dividend paying stocks with maybe a negative connotation of a utility stock or stocks that have little or no growth. And true, some of these dividend stocks fall into this category, but for a long-term investor, ignoring dividend-paying stocks and the power of dividend reinvestment and its compounding effect is an investor who is risks leaving uh, potentially large gains on the table over a lifetime investing. So here is a graph uh, courtesy of uh, Hartford Funds, and they did this research project about the value of the S&P index as it, with dividends or without dividends. And in the study, I mean, you can see from the graph here uh, how important dividends are. But in the study, they noticed that since 2010, 75% of the S&P gains is attributed to dividends and the compounding effect. So how can we find dividend stocks that are not only paying increasing dividends, but also those, uh, unlike our father's dividends, will grow in value? Now, before we get to that, hello everyone. My name is John Rowland, um, Bar Charts Head of Trading Education. And uh, joining me today is Bar Charge Project Director, my partner, and our moderator, Jean Baker. Hello, Jean. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's been a while since we've been together. Oh, yeah, it has been a couple of weeks. It but seems like a lifetime. <laughs> they've, they've flown by over here, so glad yeah. to be back on the, uh, the webinar schedule. I got to tell you, I'm a little nervous because I don't, I forget, I don't know if I remember how to do one of these <laughs> things. Oh, come on. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you ready to get started, Gene? Absolutely. Let's get going. Okay, cool. So just a reminder that again, today for is for educational purposes and decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade uh, securities, commodities, or other investments involves risks and best made on the advice of qualified financial professionals and under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damage you or anyone else incurs as a result of trading or investment activity that you or anyone else engages in based on information or material that you receive through barchart.com and or our services okay why dividend stocks that's a good question so as I presented in the opening, ignoring dividend paying stocks is ignoring these potential large gains over a lifetime investing. So what we're really going to be talking about today is a long term uh, view of uh, trading and dividend paying stocks give investors a more stable portfolio in times of uh, market volatility. These stocks tend to uh, shy away from those large uh, price swings. And typically what we'll discover is that there's this flight to quality in times of recessions and dividend paying stocks tend to hold their value because of the steady income stream the dividends provide. And finally, the act of actually paying a dividend is a sign that the board of directors believe that there are strong fundamentals in their company. And what they want to do is reward investors' capital commitment 
to their companies. In other words, good companies pay dividends. So let's look to see how we can define or find uh, dividend paying stocks. But um, more importantly, the tools that Bar Chart has to help us find these potentially high dividend yielding stocks. And I want to talk to you guys about some metrics that you can use to help you define what is a good dividend stock over those whose dividends might be in jeopardy. All right. So let's go back to bar chart. So let's go here where it says stock. And we're going to talk a lot today about our stock market page under the dividend stocks. But before I get there, I want to go to stock screener. And I'm really excited to show you guys uh, a new default screener that we just recently added to our website. So I'm under stock screener and up here it says bar chart screeners. These are default screeners that we've already created for you. And down here we have one that's called a dividend prospect. And if I open that up, uh, there's uh, the different components of the filter. We'll look at that in a moment, but uh, let me just show you the results here. And up here the under description, it basically tells us what this is. It's a bullish dividend paying stocks with strong price momentum. So what we're really seeing here is this screener is a combination of both strong dividend fundamentals with strong price uh, momentum, uh, a little fundamental and a little technical uh, aspect. So if I went to the flip charts on these particular stocks, what we'll just notice is that um, these stocks are in uh, a nice uptrend. And remember, these are also dividend paying stocks. Here's Walmart, which um, you can see has been in a nice uptrend. But let's go back to the filters on this one for a second. So here it says set filters. And these are the filters that have already been created for this. And there are some of those metrics that we're going to look at. Now, we're going to go into a lot more in depth in some of these metrics as we look at some other screeners that I have, uh, that I've created. But uh, let's start down here. And this one here, the first one says new month high date, and which was made in the last week. So although this is really kind of a technical analysis and on price performance, the time frame is in line with a long-term investor. Think about this, monthly and weekly. But also, this is actually an affirmation of strong fundamentals. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's this theory that says that the market discounts all known information. And price is a reflection of this information. So stocks that are rising in price are stocks that have strong known fundamentals and therefore is a confirmation of a strong and healthy company. So here we kind of have a little com uh, combination of the two. Now, remember, a strong, healthy company has profits and dividends are the fruits of profits. Now, again, I'm going to go in a little bit more in depth of these other filters in a moment when we look at a couple of the screeners that I have. But on this particular one, the five-year dividend growth. Now, this screener is really kind of a jumping off point for us, and we can, you know, we can adjust or add other filters at any time. So... Again, this one looking is just looking at a dividend yield growth over, let's say, five-year period of at least 10%. But you know, maybe I might want to widen my field a little bit. Maybe I want to find those stocks that are actually uh, get a, have a greater uh, dividend yield. So I'm just going to widen the field a little bit, and let's look at that result. So I had nine originally. Now I'm up to uh, 41. And again, you can see here that there's a mix of companies just you know, from top to bottom here. 
Um, yeah, there are some utility companies in here, but for instance, down here we have General Mills, right? A consumer uh, stock. And if I open up General Mills, right? Again, you can see that here's a little chart. You can see it's been in a nice uh, uptrend, and we're going to look at things called ratios, and one of the ones we're going to look at is called the debt to equity ratio. And we'll go in a little bit more in detail about that. But here's our per share information. And again, here we can see how much dividend this stock pays and what is the dividend yield. And so you can see that General Mills is paying a three, close to a 3% uh, dividend. And so think about this. This filter that we have created for you on uh, just basically looking at the wider market and just a few uh, um, metrics here, we have found 41 stocks and we found some really nice quality stocks. You know, General Mills is a company that I, I feel pretty confident is going to be here tomorrow and five years from now and 10 years from now. You know, it's a company that's been around for a while and they're consistently paying a nice dividend. But what if I wanted a greater dividend, right? Maybe 3% is not enough. Maybe I, I want to have a portion of my portfolio where I can find stocks that have a much larger dividend. So what I'm going to do is under stocks, again, under stock market ideas, we have a page called dividend stock page. And that's what this page is. So this page lists stocks paying the highest annual dividend yield. Now, a high dividend yield could be a good thing, as it, ups, as it upstates for us. And it also might be a bad thing or a warning sign of a particular stock. Um, so it's important that we do some diligence, and that's what we're going to learn in the rest of today's session, that diligence that we can start looking at. Now, the first one that we can think about is this high yield. And if I have a stock that has a high yield, there might be a reason there has a high yield. And that reason could be that price has fallen dramatically and that the yield has jumped up. Now, a stock that is in a dominant downtrend might be a stock that is not healthy or, or has some troubling uh, headwinds. And that that rise in the dividend yield might be a dividend that could be in jeopardy. So think about this. Let's say, for instance, I had a stock that was trading $20. And it paid a dollar dividend annually. So one dollar on twenty dollars is a five percent yield. And that stock falls, let's say fifty percent. It falls down to ten dollars. And that one dollar annual uh, dividend is now a ten percent yield. Yeah, you ten know, percent would be a great uh, dividend payout. But maybe there's a reason why that stock has fallen fifty percent, and that that dividend might be at jeopardy. So one of the things we can start doing in our diligence is we're going to believe in this theory that the market discounts all the information. And so what we do is we're just going to concentrate on those dividend paying stocks where they have healthy price momentum. In other words, uh, are in an uptrend. Um, for instance, but let me just make sure, give you an example here. So, um, again, let's do this uh, based on our dividend. This is how our um, page is sorted. And for instance, if I go to uh, my flip charts again, and I look at this one that was number four in the top yielding dividends, I think this is Orchard Capital. And if I look over, let's say, a year period, right? Uh, this stock has fallen from about $6 down to $3. It's, gone, it's down 50%. So there might be some other issues with this stock and that that 30% that dividend might be something that might be in jeopardy. So we want to kind of stay away from these stocks. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to shy away from stocks that are in a downtrend or maybe have been in a trading cycle um, and that, you know, maybe a juicy dividend is what's going to in, entice investors back into that stock. 
but just here's a way where we can start kind of just thinking about a high dividend does not necessarily mean it's a good thing. We got to kind of weed out the bad ones. So what can we can do? Well, under the screener, up here where it says save screen. These are screeners that I have created, that I have saved. And if you're interested to learn how to do save screeners, we have a webinar about how to do that. And I have a save screener down here, which is called Dividend Opinion. And let me just slide this down a little bit. And there's not a lot of uh, filters in here, but let's kind of just look at what we're uh, using. So first of all, I'm just starting again from our dividend stock page, those 200 high yielding dividend stocks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at that dividend yield I'm not going to put a filter on it. I just want to know what that yield is. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that little technical analysis. I'm going to say, hey, I just want to look at these stocks that have a high dividend. And I want to make sure that they have positive technical analysis. And so one of the features we have on bar chart is something called our bar chart opinion Um and we talk about uh, strength and direction. So here is, uh, you can find this in our filters under bar chart opinion there and overall averages. And you can go deeper in there and talks about strength and directions. Again, that we have a webinar about how to use this momentum indicator. But basically what it is, it kind of is a composite signal based on 13 technical indicators. So we have an overall buy signal. That means that more of those 13 are giving a buy signal. Uh, strength is more of a long-term view and direction is more of a short-term uh, view. So all I'm really doing here is I'm just doing a technical analysis saying, hey, I just wanna look at these high dividend yielding stocks and I just wanna find ones that have positive uh, technical analysis or in other words, positive momentum. And if I do that, then uh, it screens down that field and it gets it down to about um, 48 or so. And again, up here where it says main view, if I go down to filter view, now this is going to show me uh, my filters. And again, now I can sort these by high to low dividend yield. And then again, you can see some of those different uh, companies. Now, the other uh, filter that I added in there was the sector filter. And the reason why I do this is I kind of just want to see if there's a trend in terms of certain sectors. Now, again, and when I say the word dividend, I think a lot of folks are going to immediately start thinking about uh, utilities. But notice that you know our top ones here there's a lot of energy uh, stocks currently. Uh, there's some basic materials, transportation. Now, I find this kind of interesting because if you've been watching the market in uh, the last few weeks, uh, transportation stocks have actually been underperforming. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a lot of folks who are saying that they're kind of predicting a potential recessionary uh, market because they are kind of leading uh, indicators of the greater market and that when transportation stocks fall, that's kind of that uh, feeling. But again, remember here what we've done is we looked at high dividend stocks that have positive uh, price momentum. And this first one, Dorian uh, LPG, well, if we don't know what Dorian is or what that company is, I can always go open it up and go to the profile. And what we'll discover is that Dorian is a liquid petroleum gas shipping company and that they own and operate very large gas carriers. In other words, the transportation ships, and I don't know if you've ever seen these things, they're, they're massive. And there's a positive tailwind on this stock, right? And think about the narrative that has just come out from the conflict with uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the Biden administration is committed to help uh, Europeans with supply of uh, liquefied natural gas. And so here's the company that is going to transport liquid natural gas from the United States to 
uh, Europe. And so that trend certainly is not something that is going to disappear overnight. And so, again, here's a stock that investing in it over the longer period of time that's going to give us a nice dividend uh, is probably a stock that is going to do well in our portfolio. Okay, so high yield, momentum, that is what this um, screener that I've created. Now, um, at the end of the session, I will note, and I know Gene is going to help me with this, is that I know that some of you might be interested in these screeners or might want to copy them, and I will show you where I'll give you a copy of these two screeners that I'm going to present today. All right, so we talk about high dividend yields. So the next thing we can start talking about is let's start talking about some of those fundamental matrix that we can use to help us find these better dividend stocks. So again, I'm going to come back into load my screener. And this time I'm going to move away from the technical, the opinion, uh, to the fundamental. And this screener has really narrowed down our field. But let's go inside of our screener under the set filters and let's talk about those filters that I have put together for this demonstration. All right, so the first one I want to talk about is a metric of debt. And if a company has excessive debt, right, does it have a large amount of debt? Think about this now, in a changing interest rate environment, which is something that is definitely going to be affect many companies in the next few months, next few years, as the Fed starts to tighten, a rising rate, right, increases the cost to service their debt. So if a company has a large amount of debt, it might mean that they might not be able to pay out a lot of their dividends or in other words they might not be able to pay their dividends right because they're spending more money servicing their debt so we're going to look at something called the debt to equity ratio which is the total liabilities divided by uh, the shareholders equity now if i'm going to measure this matrix uh metric excuse me <laughs> matrix um Anything below one, it means that that company has more equity than debt. Um, so that's going to be kind of our threshold, right around one. Um, so let's look at, again, my filter, its results, and main view under the filter view, the filter that I've just created. I'm going to look at my debt to equity ratio. Now, a couple of these do have zero effects. That's just a data delay at the moment. But you can see, I happen to know for Dorchester, it's around 0.64. Um, but here's Devon Energy. Here is 0.69. That's telling us this company has uh, more equity than it does debt. And that's a good thing. All right. So anything above two? That is certainly a risky company. I want to stay away from those those companies. So one or below. The next metric we're going to look at is something called the current ratio. And this is the current assets divided by um, current liabilities. So, again, a good ratio to start thinking about is we want to find a company who's assets are about one and a half times its liabilities or anything one and a half times or greater. If it's one to one or below, then that's telling us that that company might not be able to meet their obligations, at least in the short term, and that dividends might be the first thing to be cut. So again, we kind of want to be in that uh, about one and a half ratio. So I put up um, last year's current assets and last year's current uh, liabilities. And again, if I go back to my result page and I go under back under my filter view, for instance, here you can see you see Dorchester Minis. 
you know, their assets are definitely greater than their liabilities. Here's Devon Energy. You know, it's just a little under one and a half, but certainly our assets are greater than our liabilities. And then here we have down here a couple ADRs and we have Vail again, right around that one and a half or percent, or excuse me, one and a half uh, ratio. The next one I want to talk about is called the dividend payout ratio. And this is the annual dividend divided by earnings. And again, what we kind of want to do here is we just definitely want to make sure that our company has a nice dividend uh, ratio payout, a positive one for sure. Uh, so, you know, between zero and 35%, that's good. That's okay. Um, a healthy company, you're going to find somewhere in that 35 to 55%. Uh, when you start getting into 55, 75, then you're getting a little bit on the high end. Uh, 75 to 95% is very high. And anything above 100% is just unsustainable. So stay away from those companies. So if I was going to do a sweet spot, you know, kind of a cold, Goldilocks, you know, let's look at right around that medium, uh, 35% to 55%. And then the next assessments we're gonna look at are gonna be based upon business condition or the health of that company. So healthy companies that pay consistent dividends are good companies. But really healthy companies consistently pay dividends and increase those dividends. Now, remember that original uh, default filter that we just put up on the website, uh, dividend prospects? Remember we used a very small threshold for our dividend uh, growth over a five-year period? It was just on the low. Here, again, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just casting uh, a much wider net. I just want to see. And then again, if I'm looking for a company that is going to pay me a dividend, you know, I also want to see them increase that dividend. And I want to see that increase being, you know, exponential as we go further and further along in time. Now, there's a greater uh, percentage. And then the last two filters are cash flow. And what we're going to do in this here is we just want to look at last quarter's cash flow versus the previous year's cash flow. And we just want to make sure that they're in line. Um, so, again, let me kind of give you an example here. For instance, um, let's say last year's cash flow was up 50%. And this first quarter, uh, the cash flow was up. 15% or 10%, right? There's four quarters in a year, so we're right in line with last year's cash flow. What I don't want to see is, let's say, this quarter's cash flow is a negative, and that could be a headwind telling me that company is coming into a headwind. Now, it doesn't mean that that dividend is going to go away, it just is you know, something I need to be aware of. Or if I'm looking at last year's cash flow, if last year's cash flow is negative and the first quarter is negative, then that would definitely be uh, a stock that I would probably uh, shy away with in the dividend reinvestment theory. So again, let's look at our results. And again, go to my filter view. And again, here we see on our Dorchester Minis, uh, you know, our cash flow last annually last year was a positive 78 percent. In the first quarter, you know, it they announced, uh, you know, almost 50 percent. So is this in line? Yeah. If not, if anything, it's probably a greater cash flow than the previous year. If we look at Devon Energy again, you know, last year uh, cash flow increased by 200 percent. And in the first quarter, it was up about 50%. Is that in line, right? You know, yeah, it is. So it's definitely one 
that uh, I would be interested in looking at. Now, on Vail, right, last year was um, up 79%, and the first quarter was only up 7% or 8%. So it's not keeping up with last year's. Now, there could be a seasonal effect here. There might be some headwinds that this company uh, might be facing. So again, that's where I'm gonna have to do a little bit more due diligence. But if I see one that, see in the last quarter, I would see a negative cash flow versus a positive cash flow from the last year, that would probably be one that I wanna maybe filter out of. Okay. So here this screener has really narrowed down uh, our field our dividend stock field, which is about 200 stocks, down to these six. So let's look look at a couple of these, just kind of from a chart perspective. And Dor Dorchester Minis, and again, if you don't know what this company is, so let me change uh, this to a year. And you can see this, right? Again, here's a stock that's been paying dividends consistently has a nice dividend return over the last five years. And you can see over the last two years, it's well, last year, excuse me, uh, it's been in a nice uptrend. So if you were reinvesting that dividend into this stock, you would have been really outperforming. Uh, your portfolio would be really outperforming. Uh, here's Devon. Again, you know, this is an energy stock that is definitely in the news. Uh, again, but again, look at our trend here. Look at our price action. Uh, one of the things we can do is if I right click on my chart here, it says events and adjustments. And notice this, if I do earnings, notice a lot of the areas where the, the price stalls and then starts to move again, it's right around earnings. Again, the market is taking, digesting that information and then rewarding that stock with a pro positive price momentum. And then here's that veil. Now, if you're not familiar with veil, again, a different um, company, this is, is an ADR, it's a South American company. If I go under the profile, this is a mining company that uh, is in iron ore, nickel, manganese, copper, bauxite, aluminum, potash. You know, is this a narrative that is in the market right now? It sure is, right? The inflationary, right? A lot of these components are in going into EV vehicles, potash, uh, agriculture. So is this a stock that has positive tailwinds? Is it part of a greater uh, macro trend? Yeah, it is. Do we feel that this stock could appreciate over the next couple of years? Uh, it certainly doesn't seem like there's a lot of headwinds in this. Now, if I look at the chart, the only headwind I really see is that price is now coming back to where it was about a year ago. And certainly the momentum and the uh, trends of inflation for the, what this company is in is still at, at their backs. And this stock is paying, I think, a 10% uh, yield. So that's kind of how we can go about looking at uh, dividend stocks. Uh, what are some of the metrics that we can use in terms of weeding out the bad ones and looking for the good ones? A little bit of a technical analysis, a little bit of fundamental analysis. Now, before I um, give you guys some takeaways, I do see a couple questions popping up here. So, Gene, give me a moment here while I read a couple of these questions. Are there any other questions that you're getting, like general questions? Well, John, while you go and read through the questions I've passed on to you, let me answer a few things. Uh, we've had a number of people ask if there's a similar page or a similar screener for ETFs. And, yes, there is. If you go to the ETFs tab, you'll find uh, right under Market Pulse, right above the screener, top dividend ETFs. So there is a similar page for ETFs. You can use the ETF screener to screen for 
for these types of instruments as well. Uh, the other question that I'm seeing is uh, whether you need a Premier account in order to do some of the things that you've been demonstrating today. You need at least a free account, uh, the one that you just simply sign up with your email address. You need a free account in order to run a screener. But some of the things that John had been showing you, like if, if you want to screen directly on a data table page, such as this one, if you want to click that screen icon, pull all of these top dividend ETFs into the ETF screener and add your own take on it, that does require a premier membership. And we offer a free 30-day trial, uh, no obligation. So if you haven't tried premier, we really suggest that you take a look at it and uh, give it a shot. So John, back to you. Um, I think there is a few other questions that you have there. No, I think uh, you've answered a couple of them. Um, I do see one from Ricardo has asked about preferred stocks for, with dividends. Um, you know, I mean, you know, if we think about a common stock, share stock, and a, div, and a preferred stock, you know, those ones can tend to move a little bit slower. Um, you know, if you feel more comfortable doing a preferred stock, then, you know, that's fine. That's every investor has a different um, needs and goals. I will do say that you will notice that a lot of these high dividend company uh, stocks are trusts or LPs, uh, limited partnerships. So there are some tax things that you need to understand. So uh, I'm not a certified public accountant, but it, I would definitely, if you're going to invest in one of these Company, especially over a long period of time that you consult with your CPA and also your financial advisor to understand the tax ramifications. They're a little bit different. Now, dividends do have a tax advantage and you get a little bit of a tax break over, let's say, capital gains. Um, so there are some tax advantages too, but again, limited partnerships and trusts are a little bit different than, let's say, just a common um, uh common share. So I did want to go back to the dividend stock page here. And I just wanted to look at Vail. Again, I wanted to be curious what that dividend was. And there it is. So it's paying about a 6.8% yield. And, you know, look over the five year, it's up almost 6,000%. So here's a company that um, is doing pretty decent and it's paying a nice dividend. It's paying a dollar forty dividend on a, what, a $20 stock. So, I mean, uh, you know, again, I'm not advising or recommending them stock. I'm just saying there's a lot of good things that are lining up uh, with this particular company. Um, and if we go back to our Devon. I think they're paying about a 7% dividend. Yeah, 6.5%. Okay. Cool. All right, so let's talk about some takeaways. All right. Don't underestimate the power of dividends and this reinve reinvesting compounding effect, especially for us long-term investors. Again, just from my own personal experience, when I look to and put in my, I have three different kinds of trading baskets. I have kind of like a day trading account. I have a, a swing trading account where I trade maybe a little bit more options. But in the long term, uh, my personal long term portfolio, every one of those stocks pays a dividend. That is one of my criteria in terms of my um, portfolio. Trend your friend. Companies pride themselves on consistent payouts. There's actually um, a class of dividend paying stocks are called the aristocrats of dividends. And these are companies that have paid dividends out for not only multiple quarters, but multiple years and they consistently pay. And uh, you can Google it and they, there's some criteria about there. But there's a lot of companies who want to be part of that, that group and that they really try their best to consistently pay dividends, but not only consistently pay them, but to, to increase them over a longer periods of time. 
look at those ratios that I explained to you, right? Our debt to equity. Is a company strapped with debt, right? Is there, are they burdened with debt, especially in a rising interest rate environment, which we're going to experience over the next two or three years? Those companies' dividends might be at risk. Can our company pay its bills to their current liabilities versus their current assets, right? And will they have to cut dividends to pay their bills? And what is that payout ratio, right? Are they returning profits, those fruits of labor, uh, to shareholders? No, a lot of companies over the past years have been doing a lot of div, uh, sh buy share buybacks. That is definitely a way to uh, pay back uh, shareholders. But again, I kind of believe I run my. I want the money. I want to decide what I want going to do with it. Um, and then finally, cash flow, right? A healthy company is creating positive cash flow, and a positive cash flow are those uh, fruits of a good company. And so we're going to look for those companies who are performing well and continuing to be able to pay out those dividends. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I, I, I had fun putting this one together, especially because of uh, – I actually found some really good uh, training opportunities, and hopefully you guys can come back and go through there and see if you can find the ones that fit your criteria as well. All right. So as Gene was saying before, actually, was I was saying before, in uh, here's my slides that we've just gone through. And so here's that fundamental matrix for choosing healthy dividend companies. This is the one I just showed you. Um, and then here's the one that is that momentum one. Uh, the yield, the bar chart opinion, and sector filters. So under our tools section, so under here under it says archive webinars. Right, I got to go to archive, right, Gene? Uh, I think it's still showing up in the upcoming up and webinars, time. right? Okay. Right. So here's there the we webinar we're doing today, and First of all, up here it says download the slides. So those slides that I just presented to you will include those two uh, filter slides. So if you want to look at those filters or you want to use them to build your own uh, screener, uh, they're in there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out that's attached with this webinar is there's that strength and direction for trend and momentum analysis. So that's that webinar that talks about the bar chart opinion uh, pages. And then again, what Gene is talking about, learning how to screen on and save screeners. Uh, there's um, a nice uh, little video there for you to, as well. So let's talk about what is coming up next week, right, Gene? Yes, we can do that. And while you go over to, or before you go over there, oh, scroll I know up to saying. the top of the page for a moment. So you'll see in yellow highlight uh, bar chart webinar notification. I just want to remind everybody that if you like these sessions, and I know that a number of you come back week after week, uh, just enter your email address over here, and you will be the first to know when we schedule a brand new session. Will, you'll get an email notification from us. Um, you won't get anything else from us from that email list, so we won't be spamming you with anything. Just uh, let us know that you want to be notified, and we'll do that for you. We also have a YouTube channel, and John's showing you the subscribe to our YouTube channel over there. All of our webinars are recorded. You're going to get a link a little bit later on this afternoon uh, with a link to the recording on YouTube, and you can also find us on the archived web webinars page, uh, which is the tab right over there, right next to where uh, John is positioned, right there. Okay, so let's talk about next week. Okay, so next week what we're going to do is we're going to look at an option strategy called a collar option strategy, which is basically a way for us to help lock in profits and also to protect our portfolio. One of the things we're going to discover in portfolio management is that about 10% of the stocks that you have in your portfolio are going to represent about 90% uh, 
of your profits. And so it's really important that we learn how to protect those profits, especially in the markets that we're currently uh, experienced. And so it's, it's a very basic concept in terms of how to use options, but there are some nuances that would be uh, important to understand. So I would encourage you guys uh, to watch that one. But also, you know, we had a couple weeks off and we did some planning. I just want to let you know they're not up yet. In uh, On April 20th, 20th we're going to do uh, a webinar on uh, cannabis sector. There's been a lot of... Uh, uh, things have been happening in the short term that might make those stocks interested to some longer term investors. And then after that one, we're going to do a technical analysis one, which is kind of one of my favorite technical analysis. I'm going to tease you guys on that one. I'm not going to tell you what it is uh, to kind of entice you to come by. But I think you'd be surprised uh, to find out how simple and basic it is. And yet, Maybe some of you have probably never even thought of it as a technical analysis. So those are a couple that are on the horizon. Now, before we jump away, I do see a couple last-minute questions, and there's definitely one in here I want to uh, want to address, and that's from Tony. It says, "Does a stock price get adjusted when dividends are paid out?" So, Tony, yes. Typically, what happens is when you get up to the X dividend date, the stock price will fall in reflection to the dividend payout. But then after that, if, as long as that company is still um, doing well, then you know the stock price could probably continue to perform. But that was a good question. I just wanted to address that. All right, and, uh, and so one go ahead. Of, yeah, one, of, one other thing I'm gonna throw in here. So if you are looking for uh, historical price data on a stock, we do have a page if you if you go to an individual stock page you can download the price history whether it's dividend adjusted or not you, you get to choose uh, how you do this so if you go to the price history page under technicals you can see here, analysis right so over here it's showing you three months of data if you check that dividend adjust box you can also view the uh, dividend adjusted prices you can download that data same thing on the historical data download tab you can get dividend adjusted data that way this is a page uh, for our premier members and you can go back quite a bit in time uh, getting the dividend data you can also show this on the chart john i think showed you how to display earnings but you can also display dividends on the interactive chart as well Gene, I always learn something hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so go right, go to events and adjustments, and you can. And you want to do it back dividend. adjusted dividends? Well, you can. You can do whatever you like. Whatever, oh, cool. whatever. Um, there you go, Tony. There's your answer right there, right? So awesome. Yeah, I, that's something I didn't realize. Cool. Right, and there's your dividend days, right? So you can see on the X dividend date, you can see that a lot of times price does fall. Okay, great, awesome. Okay, until next time, folks, uh, stay safe out there, be healthy, and the good of all trading. <laughs>